we, all, we talk about um, mental disorders as brain disorders, but what does that really mean? I mean, what does that do in terms of diagnosis or treatment, and how does it change the way we think about autism, schizophrenia, depression, bipolar illness? And the answer to that question is still evolving. The fact is that the constructs underlying how we think of these disorders have largely been based in the last three or four decades on psychopharmacology. And it's been this, I think, mistaken belief that if a um, serotonin reuptake inhibitor helps people with depression, then people with depression must be at quart low in serotonin. We really don't have evidence that would support that notion. And everything we know about how the brain works says that it's not only chemical but electrical transmission that, that is essential, but more to the point that the brain works through very regional mechanisms. That is everything we know about brain dynamics says that it's location, location, location. And we need to be thinking uh, much more precisely about the circuitry that underlies both normal and abnormal behavior. What that means for depression, for instance, is that we have to identify the various sites within the brain in which serotonin or one of the other tens of thousands of molecules that are important for neurotransmission, where they may be uh, active and not active in the right way, someone who has a mood disorder. That's critical for several reasons, one of which is that uh, it changes the way we think about diagnostics. It says that we've got to now understand something about the underlying circuitry uh, that's important for cognition and behavior. And we have to do that in a way that has much greater precision than what we have today. But it's also really critical when we think about treatments because our treatments really need to be about tuning circuits, uh, increasing the activity or changing the, um, the, the way in which a particular circuit is functioning. We know there are many ways to tune circuits. Uh, you tune a circuit every time you um, learn something, whether it's learning to play the piano or learning a foreign language, you're changing the brain in doing that. What we haven't thought enough about is how our therapies, whether they're medical or psychosocial, how those therapies are changing the fundamental circuitry of the brain and how they can be used to harness the brain's innate plasticity for recovery. And the reason I like this kind of an approach is it gets you away from thinking about magic bullets. When you're thinking about biochemistry, often you're thinking about the one thing that will change a chemical level of something. When you're thinking about circuitry and about tuning circuits, that tuning circuits is the goal, then you begin to think about what would be the range of things that you might bring together, social support, psychoeducation, opportunities for cognitive behavior therapy, medications, and how do you bring all those together to harness this plasticity and to make sure that someone with a very complicated problem that involves perhaps not just one, but multiple circuits and networks of networks in the brain, that someone with that kind of a problem has the greatest opportunity to recover. That's the promise of beginning to think about mental disorders as brain disorders.